Buenas tardes. There are 5.6 trillion cigarettes smoked around the world every year. And of these, about a third might end up in the environment as trash. Tiny little bits of trash. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, this might seem like a little problem, but there's an awful lot of them. And the question we have today is, why are people just like you and me who would never throw a bottle or a can out their window still throwing their butts out into the environment? And it's a, it's a big question. Maybe a small problem, but let's find out. Uh, to illustrate this, though, I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about my campus, San Diego State University, which is a beautiful place. It's a garden-like environment in Southern California, where there are some beautiful ponds and beautiful trees and beautiful girls and beautiful boys, and only about 10% of them smoke. And that's not very many. California, there's very little smoking going on because we've had a very serious effort to try to understand and to prevent the health consequences of smoking. Well, what we do on Earth Day every year on our campus is try to do a uh, cleanup project. That is to send out students, 50 or so students, who go across the campus and pick up every single cigarette butt that they can. And this has been going on for the last three years. And so how many do you think that 50 students in one hour on a one square mile campus could pick up? thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, actually it's over twenty thousand. And if you think about that, every year, that's a lot of butts. <laughs> But that's not even a small part of the environmental problem. So we should think about this globally too. And, you know, and understand what the impact might be on our beaches and our waterways and whether or not these things are toxic. And so every year, there's another organization that does something called the International Coastal Cleanup. And they go around with volunteers and pick up every single piece of trash that they can find on all the beaches that participate in this. This is throughout the world. And what do you think the single most picked up item is? Well, it's up here on the slide. It's cigarette butts and their filters. And it's millions and millions and millions of these. It's about a third of all of the stuff that's picked up in these coastal cleanups every year. And that's a lot of trash. But what does that do? Is that something that we need to be concerned about? Well, we know that in cigarettes, there's over 4,000 chemicals, 50 of which are carcinogens, and there's ethyl phenol and polonium-210 and a whole bunch of other really bad actors. And they end up on our beaches, oftentimes, because as, you, as cigarette butts are thrown into the gutters, into the storm drains, they go out into the streams and back into the ocean and back up onto the beaches. And that's not good. So what's, what's the story? Well, let me tell you what, uh, what there is in cigarette butts that's of concern. The, the first thing that I, I want to mention is that a uh, cigarette, cigarette butt contains tobacco, but also a filter. The filter is a plastic, non-biodegradable piece of trash that has absolutely no health benefits. It's a marketing tool, and I'll come back to this later. But the fact is, many people think that the filter is a piece of cotton or something that can biodegrade. It isn't, it's plastic. And it composes almost all the commercially made cigarettes today. It's part of those. In order to understand what the toxicity is of cigarette butts to living creatures, The guys in our lab at San Diego State did uh, an experiment that involved both freshwater and saltwater fish to see what the impact would be of cigarette butts soaked in water for a period of several days. And so what they found was that when you have um, one butt soaked in a liter of water for four days, it kills half the fish. This is what's known as the lethal dose 50. It's enough to be able to call cigarette butts toxic, hazardous waste. They're not just little pieces of trash. And in addition, this is, a, this is, this is with the filter and, and, and uh, remnant tobacco, but when you just take off the tobacco, the filter itself that's been smoked also kills the, uh, the, kills the fish at four butts per liter. And in fact, the filter, without being smoked, without any tobacco, 
kills the fish at eight butts per liter. So it's toxic in and of itself. Well, that's pretty interesting. And, but what does that mean in terms of human health or animal health or the environment? Well, there's a lot of buts. And what we need to do is understand what the health effects might be. Well, we understand also that kids and animals are indiscriminate eaters. And in fact, there's lots of reports of children having consumed cigarette butts and getting sick. And in fact, dogs, and I have this dog who can eat anything, including tennis balls and flip-flops and probably cigarette butts. And it only takes two cigarette butts to cause a dog to have uh, nicotine toxicity. So uh, those, those effects are possible. And when we think in terms of the possible, we need to think about precautions. And, and this uh, picture shows the, the possible pathways that cigarette butt leachates and chemicals can take to get into the human food chain. It's a possibility that uh, through the water, uh, our water systems, aquatic systems, through contaminated soils, uh, and into the food chain that, that cigarette butt chemicals can bioamplify or bioaccumulate and actually affect human health. We don't know. But there are some other models of contamination like this that we can think of. In fact, we know that we can find antibiotics in uh, our drinking water supplies, uh, pesticide residues, things that are you know, leached into the environment just as cigarette butt waste might be leaching into the environment. So it's a possibility, and so we need to take precautions. And that means something, uh, a principle that I'd like to present here called the precautionary principle. It means we don't have to have absolute proof of human health effects in order to take precautions against contaminating the environment. And I submit that we have enough information here to think about this at least as a principle dealing with cigarette butt waste. Well, what to do? Well, the first thing as we're doing here today, is to raise awareness about the, the issue of cigarette butt waste in the environment. We see them all the time, you notice them, and you're going to notice them a lot more after today's talk. And I'd like to play a little public service announcement done by one of uh, the groups that we work with, the Legacy Foundation in Washington, D.C., which is a nonprofit public health organization. So let's hear this. Los químicos tóxicos y los carcinógenos están infiltrándose en el medio ambiente. Está pasando justo ahí donde vives, trabajas y juegas, en todas partes. Las colillas de cigarrillo son un desperdicio tóxico. Acabemos con la contaminación tóxica. Aprende más en colillastóxicas.org. So Legacy released this during Earth Day last month and won an award for being the best ad uh, for Earth Day on uh, television. So what else? What other ideas can you come up with? What other weird ideas or approaches to this? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. And I think one of the first things to do is to think about how to change the social norm about butt flicking, about how we can work with smokers and people everywhere to try to stop this behavior that's, that's not good for the environment. And uh, that can be done in a lot of different ways. We can put up butt receptacles for people to use to, to toss their butts instead of onto the street. We can think about banning smoking in all parks and beaches. I'm not sure if that can, uh, has happened here in, in uh, Ibiza, but the first uh, smoke-free beach was in Hanauma Bay in Hawaii in 1993. And now, throughout Southern California, almost all of the beaches are smoke-free, and nobody died and everybody still keeps coming to the beaches. And we can also uh, ban smoking in outdoor areas where people eat or congregate at, at the work site where they have to go outside to smoke. Well, again, we've seen the success of banning smoking indoors. We should think about seeing the success of banning smoking outdoors uh, as well. And we could add a litter fee. Now, this is an interesting concept where a fee can be added on to the price of cigarettes to help with cleanup. San Francisco, the city of San Francisco did this. They added a 20 cent per package fee onto cigarettes to fund an anti-litter program that now has been signed into law. It helps because it also reduces the consumption of cigarettes. We can add a, a, a deposit return scheme to the sale of cigarettes, just like we do with bottles and cans. And this is a very important one. This might have some legs because it's part of what we call take back. 
And this is another concept that uh, should, be, should be understood in terms of the environmental issues related to tobacco uh, waste. Because we, we think about take back already with things such as paint and electronics and tires, things that we buy that have to be taken back and disposed of properly. But that's not been the case with tobacco. So what I want to submit is that the extended producer responsibility principle deals with the management of products such as tobacco or some of these other uh, to, uh, environmental problems from the, from the uh, manufacturing process down through the end of its life as well. And so this is something else we want to try to do to bring it back to the tobacco industry who makes enormous profits off tobacco and yet doesn't do anything to clean up the environment. Now, getting back to filters briefly before I end. Filters, again, are not a health device. They don't protect anybody from the hazards of smoking. They've been used as a marketing tool for advertising from the very beginning. And in fact, there was a, a filter that was made of asbestos before, the Kent Micronite filter. I can't believe that. Uh, it was thought they've been more recently uh, involved in trying to label cigarettes as light or ultra light so that you think you're getting something less in terms of the toxins, but it doesn't work that way. They're toxic, and the environmental issues related to these now, I think, are also sort of thing that we should consider as important. So what my big new idea, the, the idea that I'd like to share with you today, is to ban the sale of filtered cigarettes. Now, I know this sounds completely backwards. As a public health person, I want something to be safer, but they're not safer. They're an environmental problem, and by banning the sale of filtered cigarettes, we'll do several things. We'll reduce the number of cigarettes that are smoked, we'll reduce the, uh, the uh, uh, number of people who begin to smoke, and we'll reduce the trash that's in the environment. And so I'd like you to at least think about this as a, a different, crazy new idea that I hope uh, we'll see the light of day sometime. And one of the ways that might happen is through something called the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. This is the first and only health treaty. Spain is a signatory to this treaty, along with 175 other countries that might, as a result of getting a lot of countries together to have binding legal obligations on the kinds of products that are sold, actually be able to do something related to uh, the removal of filters from the tobacco market. So it's a, a strange new idea uh, that probably doesn't sound right to begin with, but I invite you also all to think about what you might do to come up with some new ideas to prevent this issue of cigarette butt waste in the environment. Because it's, it seems like a small issue, but there again are trillions and trillions of cigarettes dumped every year. And certainly the precautionary principle leads us to think that we ought to be able to do something about it. So I invite you to join with a lot of other people like these guys here from uh, surfers against sewage in the United Kingdom and think about how we can prevent cigarette butt waste uh, from contaminating our beautiful beaches. Thanks.